everybody, and welcome back to the Wattpad Book Club. My name is Phoenix, and once again, I am joined with my lovely co-host, Miss Jolene. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> welcome back. I, you know, it's, it's great. I'm glad to be here. I'm very excited to finish up this fic. Yeah. And uh, what fic is that? It is the Law X Reader. We had started with many much time ago it's called wake up we were in a coma for a very long time yeah and yeah. then law was our doctor and he has i wouldn't say revived us but in a way he did yeah he could be my doctor anytime <laughs> <laughs> oh shit you know what i just f like remembered oh what what happened all the shit that we gotta put in <laughs> no because <laughs> the only what? thing we have in here is the is the name bill cosby Wait, are we penny in this <laughs> Yes! Oh, wait, what? Sorry. Yes, this is where Penny again! Okay, well, I'm just gonna put the- What was her last name? <laughs> oh, Penny, Penny Thompson! Thompson! That's all I'm gonna put in. <laughs> just in case it does, nothing else comes up for this. We'll be fine. Yeah. We'll just- Make it We'll just BS go. it, you know? Yeah, we're gonna gaslight Penny and be like, Your favorite color was always, uh, purple. <laughs> Alright, uh... Love it. I, Love that for her. Yeah, I have a quarter. You wanna be heads or tails? Tails! I'm feeling tails this time. <laughs> it's heads. I'm in first. <laughs> Oops, what fucking chapter is this? Uh, uh 24. Alright, seven, seven more to go. <laughs> Law crossed his arms and looked away offended, and so did your boss. Bolts sitting down next to each other while you look at them, a little pissed off. They not only kept cursing at each other under their breaths, but they have caused a commotion during the party. You are grown up men, you said, crossing your arms yourself. Both of you. He started. Said <laughs> Law, pointing at your boss. He just attacked me. Because you're no good enough for Penny. Not my shiny Penny. <laughs> <laughs> He yelled, looking angrily at the doctor. She deserves better. Stop it, both of you! You shouted at This her. is so crazy to me. Just, I don't know. I don't know. What? Just like, A, that's a whole doctor. Yeah. He's the like, best Like, if surgeon. I went with a doctor, my mom would be like, Yo, she's, you're set. You're set. He has money. <laughs> Dude, just get yourself a computer engineer, man. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> oh my what? god. Never mind. <laughs> I'm married for love, I promise. <laughs> hey, uh, I wasn't even invited to the wedding. <laughs> it hasn't happened yet, I just call my husband. <laughs> I wish. Maybe taxes won't be that bad this year if we were married. <laughs> <laughs> you! You point at your father. Why did you attack him? He looked away shamed. And you, you pointed at Law. Why did you continue? He said he was going to kill me, replied Law, looking angrily at the man who looked away, pouting like a little kid. You deserve something better, Penny, he replied, pointing at Law, who just raised an eyebrow confused. This stupid nurse is no good for- Wow, how dare you downplay his achievements. Wow. Call him a stupid nurse. <laughs> Forget Terrible. For your information, I am the best surgeon in the world. He defended himself. Not a nurse. I am more than capable of saving her life if anything were to happen to her. That's not enough! He re replied, getting heated up. She deserves even more than that. Who are you to tell her who to date anyway? Law replied, annoying at the man. I'm... I'm his... Wait... Oh, I think, I think it's supposed to be like, I'm her father. Fuck. <laughs> I'm her father! <laughs> Your soul immediately left her body when he spoke those words. Your father realized his mistake too late as he saw Law's face turn into one of confusion. He took a moment to process the information as you didn't even look alike, even look alike, your father. So he never suspected it. I mean, he retracted. Like a father since I'm her boss. He tried to lie, but said, but said it while putting a pretty absurd face that was not helping him at all, just making himself look ridiculous. Please stop it, you said, face palming at the man. 
You're making a fool of yourself. He hasn't noticed, he whispered near you. I can hear you, said Law, smirking at the old man in you. Why are you hiding it? He asked curiously, as if didn't understand the reasoning behind him hiding it. It's complicated, you said, looking away. It was something you didn't talk of about with a lot and if you and if you did it was only a really really close people and less people that knew the best for you you didn't know about though you didn't know about law if he were to take you seriously or would doubt you like the rest of them it's not said your father the only thing you need to know is that you should leave my daughter alone he crossed his arms proud to call you his daughter in front of him you can't decide that for me, you said angrily. You should go apologize to the guests for the scandal you, you made before you lose clients. She's right, honey. Naomi entered the room with an angry face. She glanced at your father, who stood defeated. Now, she demanded, making him almost run outside the room. She looked at the two of you before her expression changed to a happy one. You guys stay here, I'll solve it. She rolled outside, leaving you with law. I suppose she's your mother, he said, standing up. He looked away embarrassed as if he had already figured it out. Please, Law, don't tell anyone, you said, shaking him a little bit. Everything will be- Oh my god, she's a Nepo baby. Oh my god, what the <laughs> fuck? She didn't get any success. <laughs> no. I can't Terrible. believe what I'm hearing. Man, cancel Penny on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> on Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> Not in, it'll be on Facebook. Even worse. <laughs> Not Facebook! Now, now your mom has to know. <laughs> no. <laughs> They're like, I can't believe Penny was a Nepo baby this whole time. I thought she was really good at writing books. <laughs> Damn. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Boycott the company. <laughs> Oh, everything will be over if someone outside knows. I didn't tell anyone. Oh, I won't tell anyone, he said, making you smile. But you explain to me why I can't tell anyone, he smirked, while you pouted angrily at him before sitting down yourself. You promise you won't tell anyone, he said with a serious tone. It was risky, and yet you felt as though you could trust him with that. He sat down next to you and nodded. For you, it was all you needed to see. They are my real parents. I... He stopped himself. Oh, so not a Nepo baby. But we benefit from it. <laughs> hmm. I mean, it's like an adoption. I guess we'll see. Yeah. I, he stopped himself. He could have said that he suspected us. You didn't look alike. Nami, Naomi, neither. But he knew that, that if it was something you prefer to keep a secret, that you shouldn't interfere much. Have you heard about the writing contest our publishers does does every year? You asked as you shook his head. It's something the company's done since they started. A contest for kids to show their stories. The winner gets money and stuff. You sighed, remembering when you wrote your story. And then smiled, remembering how nervous you were to send it in the mail. I won the second year. I wouldn't be surprised. You're a really good writer, he said, complimenting you. You smiled awkwardly at him. My boss always delivers the prize in person, you said, thinking about the moment. He went there to deliver what he called the best thing he's ever read. He overreacted. He chuckled. He always overreacted with stuff he was excited about. But he didn't expect that the girl who won lived in an orphanage. Law couldn't breathe for a second. He didn't expect that to be your answer. He adopted me, and I've been with them ever since. I wanted to be a writer, and he wanted to share my stories. But people would believe me, would believe he was sharing them just because you were his daughter. You nodded. You placed a hand on yours. It's been a secret since I remembered, you told him. Only a few actually know everything behind it. So please? I told you I won't tell anyone, he said. I always keep my promises. Blah. <laughs> You kissed the man who didn't hesitate to kiss back. He understood that you had something something behind, just like he had. He couldn't judge you for your past. Thank you. Oh, so sweet. So romantic. 
Penny, he couldn't help but see your eyes. He knew that he couldn't let go of you by now, and he didn't know why, but for some reason, he didn't care to know. I... Take your dirty hands off of her! Your father yelled when he entered the room, almost breaking the door when he saw you and Law too close for his liking. You scumbag! <laughs> Leave me alone, old man! Law yelled back to your father. He only gr growled in anger, saying that Law was still holding your hand. I'm gonna have such cute grandkids! Naomi stormed inside the room, swooning happily around your father, seeing how cute you two looked together. You looked away, hoping to die right there because of what your parents were doing, but Law just chuckled seeing the scene. He has such a nice family. It was a shame he had to hide it. So tech may be a Nepo baby. <laughs> we are a Nepo baby. Yeah. We may not be related, but we're still getting the benefits. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Excuse me, I get my my You're my conveniently timed ads. Oh, buy a Tesla. <laughs> <laughs> I get the township ads. Oh, was it? <laughs> I get the little farmer one. Nice. I get whatever my computer gives me, so I get like the makeshift ones and like U twos. Yeah, uh, gotta love it. Okay. Law well woke up, looking at his side. You were missing again. He sighed before standing up to look for you as he knew exactly where you were. Beppo was also missing, and he knew that he knew that he was with you as well. He took the time to put something on to not walk naked around the apartment before walking to the living room where you were. Good morning, he said to your concentrated self. You waved at him while finishing to write on your laptop. I'm so sorry. I just had the urge to finish it. He said, closing the laptop and leaving it next to you. I told you you could use the you could use my office. He said, sitting next to you, and you waited, wasted no time placing your head in his lap. You shouldn't be nah, you shouldn't be shy about it. I just haven't gotten used to it. You admitted. Dating law had been an amazing thing. It had been almost eight months since everything had started, and things had only been great so far. Law and you had bonded so much. That the idea of you moving in with him had popped out at some point, so you were on, the, you were in progress of testing out if it would work. Lau was more than happy to have you around, and you had learned to take care of Beppo already, and he loved you, sometimes even more than Law. <coughs> He'd also start started cooking for both of you, always avoiding bread because Law seemed to hate it. So you found your ways. Sometimes. He had arrived extremely late, so you'd find a way to make him rest as much as he could, as he would sometimes be sucked up by work. Please, said Law. Use it. You don't have to ask. But it looks so personal and clean. You pulled out a bunch of notes from next to you. You'd been keeping them to avoid making a mess of your creative process and just work that way. You didn't want to mess up Law's perfect office. Come here. Law moved you and... Shut up, taking your hand. He walked you to his office, just like always, clean and perfect. Not a single part out of place. This is yours too if you want to use it. He looked nervous as he took your laptop and placed it next to his. He took something out of the way so you have some space. Are you sure? You asked. He took your shoulders and made you sit on, made you sit on his chair. Law, this is too much. Nonsense, he said. Wait. He made you stand up, sitting himself. Something's wrong. He tried his chair, which for you was completely fine. He pulled you into his lap out of nowhere and you sit on him. There. That's better. He said giving you a sex decent work, which you couldn't help but chuckle about. You're dangerous, he said, poking his chest. You're making me fall for you even more. <laughs> Smash. Anyone? <laughs> huh? None? <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> we're fighting. We're fighting. We're fighting in the parking lot of a Denny's. I swear. What? For It'll probably be a it? Cracker Barrel, but. <laughs> I'm gonna go get my, uh, my. What is it called again? The, the strawberry cream cheese filled you're... pancakes, and then you're gonna. Those are so parking. good, but. <laughs> I still think about them. Anyway. <laughs> well, 
I'm doing a good job, he said, going for a kiss before being interrupted by Bebo, who jumped on top of both of you, bringing the chair down and breaking it in, pro in the process. Luckily for you, Law and none of you were hurt. Bebo! The dog ran away faster than a bullet, knowing, oh, knowing how bad Law was going to scold her for what he just did. And indeed, after checking that you were okay, he ran after the dog. After that weird morning, Law asked you to get some coffee for- Get some coffee from the sh coffee shop nearby. He hated that store, and yet he asked you to go. Maybe because you liked it. Maybe because he had something in mind, but it was weird. You paid for your coffee, then walked back to the apartment with Beppo on a leash. Who seemed sad after Law scolded him for half an hour like he was a child. Oh, poor baby. That's what I'm going to say. He said, throwing a cookie to the dog. Well, I was only saying so because he wants you to be a good boy, he said. His tail wagged, excited, eating the cookie on the floor. The dog barked excitedly, and you tilted your head at the cuteness of the dog. Of course you're a good boy. Just be more careful, okay? The dog nodded as, nodded as if he could understand you, and you both kept walking back to Law's apartment. You pulled the key Law had given you, and looked looked at it for a second, as if it was something precious. It was the key to his place after all. Bebo barked at you as he was waiting patiently before you opened the door to receive a confetti cannonball right on the face, making your vision blurry and rainbow at the same time. Surprise! You heard two familiar and excited voices. You got it in her face, you idiots! Lost scold of them, he ran to you, helping you get the confetti off your face, especially around your eyes. Especially off your eyes. Are you okay, Penia? You nodded, spitting some confetti out. So sorry, Penny. <laughs> Penguin and Sachi apologized while being dragged by their ears by Ikaku. It's okay, guys. You look, you said, looking around the apartment. The apartment had balloons around and some funny little decorations, and the floor now had confetti. What's going on? Happy recovery day, Sashi said. Law had the idea. Oh, Law had the idea, he said, pointing to Law, who is now getting a broom and handing it to Penguin to clean the mess. <laughs> I just thought, it had been eight months from today, he he said, sitting next to you, still trying to get some confetti out of his hair, out of your hair face. Since you woke up, you've fully recovered the eight months you've been out. Oh, Law. He pushed his hand away, kissing him, making cr making the crows on of response. You shouldn't have. What can I say? He kissed you again. I'm Dr. Heart Stealer. That was <laughs> corny as hell. That was corny as hell, Akaku said. The man who glared at her annoyed, but she didn't really mind. Penny, congratulations. She said, pushing Law away to hug you. After all, she was a secret fan of yours. Thank you, Akaku. He said, hugging her back. Law looked at her, kind of jealous, but stopped himself from doing anything before he heard a loud knock at the door. He went to open it to see your father and mother standing there. Welcome, he said nicely for law standards. Oh, law, thank you for inviting us. Sorry we're late, your mother said, giving him a basket full of little presents while your father just looked away and entered. What are you doing here? You asked your parents. We're your bosses, your father said. We're... We were there for all eight months. We deserve to be here. He crossed his arms looking like he wanted to kill Law, who wasn't <laughs> even paying attention to him. Don't be like that, Harold, Naomi said. We just wanted to congratulate one of the, our greatest employees, she said nicely, giving you a little box as a present. Thank you very much, boss, he said, opening it to see a little pen. You smiled as it was a thing Naomi did. Every time she was happy, she gifted fancy pens for no apparent reason. Would you, Would you, Oh, wait. Would you get? He said, looking at Law. Looking at the basket Naomi gave him. Wine, cheese. He took away a piece of fancy bread like it was poisonous <laughs> and placed it far away as he could. Candles, a book, and... You both looked at each other after seeing a pacifier in between the things. You glanced at Naomi with a worried expression. Oh, sorry, she said, taking it from Law's hands. I think it dropped it there by accident, she saying, totally lying. Please don't, you said to her, embarrassed. Law, on the other hand, looked, took you by the waist and pulled you closer. 
afraid of children? He asked. You shake your head. He seemed way too excited for someone who literally fought kids on the street for doing dumb stuff or <laughs> being one of the kids at the hospital bullied for <laughs> being one of the kids at the hospital he bullied for being too scared. Not at all, you said. I just... I just don't think I'd be a good mother, you said. It was your biggest fear after all, to fail just like your real parents did. After the little party, Lan Yu ended up cleaning up the house. The thought of what Naomi said had did was still in your mind and La could notice something was off about you. When you were done, you laid in the bed, sinking in your thoughts. What is it? He asked, sitting next to you on the bed. It's nothing, he said, turning to face him. You poked his cheek. Just life. Is it about the baby thing? He asked. You had just skipped the topic after the awkward moment you just you had with him. You don't have to worry about a baby. He said, kissing your neck slowly. At least not yet. Oh my god! Bart. <laughs> <laughs> no! You are dangerous, no. Law, he said, pushing the man away for a moment. Too dangerous. He smirked at the comment, getting, getting you and holding you close. You know what I smashed? <laughs> Alright, uh, 26. A lot of fancy dining shit at the top. Alright. Oh god. <laughs> you promised. Law scolded you. You sighed defeated as you had indeed promised to go with him. You didn't think he would remember, but he did. Just one more page? You asked as you shook his head. He needed to be there on time and you still needed to get ready. Please, I can be ready in five minutes. He shook his head again. This time, you rolled your eyes and, s and stood up from your chair, lazily walking to the room and picking picking stuff from the drawer. Why do you want me there so bad? You asked genuinely curious, as he hadn't invited you before for any of his doctor dinners. He asked me to do so. He said that our doctors were all older than him and always brought up their partners. The wives constantly asked for his companion. He didn't have one until recently. You. <laughs> and still... He had decided not to invite you because he knew you didn't like those weird social dinners because he didn't like them either. Dr. Skull's wife told me that she would bring her niece if I appear alone tonight and I really don't want anything to do with her. Good, you said, kissing his cheek as you placed, as you placed your hair in a more styled way. Almost ready to leave. Almost, all, oh, fuck. Almost ready to leave already. You were right about the five minute thing. You were more than ready to leave, looking more decent and feeling fresh. Oh my god, dinner date? Oh my god, this is mm -hmm. awesome. I get to be surrounded by old wealthy men that have they're about to kick the bucket soon. <laughs> Let's go! Maybe they'll put us in the will. Yes! <laughs> yeah, one of them is dying, they're like, give it to the beautiful lady at the diner. I think her name was, uh, <laughs> Dime! <laughs> On the way to the restaurant, Law gave you a lot of instructions and information about the doctors. So much information. Most of the information was about which doctors were going to be there, what they did, their wives, and what to talk to them about and what not to. But the instructions were the weirdest thing ever, as he had asked her not to be alone with a doctor called Dr. Main, who he was weird and preferred her to stay by his side as much as she could. Dr. Trafalgar! A woman waved at the entrance of the restaurant to both of them. What a surprise! Good night, Miss Douglas, Law said as you as you approached her. Good night, Dr. Douglas, the man next to the woman nodded politely. I'm so glad you finally brought her, she said, excitedly pulling you closer to give you a huge hug, leaving you out of breath before she dragged you inside to a huge table full of people. Law slowly followed behind you. Girls, this is Trafalgar, Dr. Trafalgar's girl. The woman at the table almost ran to you, asking a lot of questions. Like, how did you meet? How was he? If he was romantic, and all that thing that, to the point it overwhelmed you. Law had to first shake hands with his colleagues before he can sneakily get you out of there. Despite you being surrounded by so many people, he managed the situation well. Excuse me, ladies, I suggest we continue with dinner so we can get before it gets cold. 
dazed all agree and walked back to their seats next to their respective husbands, all chatting about Law and Yu, as it was a weird thing to see him with company. They like you already, he said, when you when he opened the chair for you. I hope that's a good thing, you said nicely. Dr. Trafalgar, how is the the what? <laughs> what are the, all these words? Corn coronary re Vasculvation? I wish I could help you, but I just got an ad. I don't know what that word is. <laughs> How was that surgery you did the other day? He <laughs> sorry, <laughs> you <that>. yeah. <laughs> you asked rather coldly. Blasmer to this question. It was more than successful. I had no difficulties or problems during the surgery, and the patient seems to be almost fully recovered, he said in a cocky tone. How was your colonoscopy? I know that word. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what this is. I said not what it says. Wait, I thought that's how you spell colonoscopy. Is that not how you spell it? Hold on. <laughs> there is n no. Hold on, hold on. Give me a second. Colonoscopy. Keep in mind, colon is spelled B O L O. Oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> you're right. That's not how you spell it. <laughs> it's probably like colorless. Col what was it? Colorless. Oh, <laughs> I can't even. Colsystectomy. Yeah, how would your colonoscopy? <laughs> you know what? Go for it. Yeah, I'm just gonna go for it. <laughs> even though that ain't, that ain't not the spell. <laughs> Good, as usual. He kept eating. <laughs> That's when you realize what was going on in here. They are all playing. Or at least showing off their goals in the surgery room. Law was the clear winner for that night, despite the numerous attempts of the others to top his surgeries with a lot of smaller ones. He always got the best the best ones. You couldn't help but to listen how proud he talked about his accomplishments. At home, or when you were with him, he talked about his surgery as like a more normal thing and not a big deal, but he had just presented them all as the best things that he'd ever done. Well, competitive, aren't you? He whispered in your ear. He just chuckled and placed an arm around you. Why you never do that to me, honey? Oh, oh, why do you never do that to me, honey? A woman asked her husband, who looked away annoyed by the young couple. Don't they look adorable? Thank you, he said nicely. Your name's Penny, right? A man asked, and you nodded. Law held your hand instinctively as he didn't like it at all. What do you do for a living? I'm a writer. You said. The man raised an eyebrow. I write novels and stuff. Well, it's a pleasure to meet you, Penny. The woman on the table looked rather angry at the man speaking. Dr. Payne also was also hated by everyone for being a sexist doctor who had stabbed everyone on his way to the top. Oh, like backstab. I thought he was like shaky people in the hallway. <laughs> <I'm> really shaky. <laughs> he's, yeah. passing, he's like in the hallway passing a nurse. He's like, good day, Dr. Payne. And then he's just like, Wah! and just. <laughs> Like, right in the side. Oh my god, he stabs her in the neck. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, he stabs his people in the way that uh, always competed against Law for the best patrons. But Law also had always been better than him. The thing that he hated was that he was better and way younger than him. What have you done this way, Dr. Main? Another one asked, trying to return a more normal conversation. But Dr. Main's expression changed to a curious one to an annoyed one when, as he had nothing to brag about, so he just sipped his wine. Whatever you do, Penny, he whispered. Do not get close to him, ever. He held your hand tightly as you could see the way Dr. Main was looking at you, and he wasn't having it. I promise, you whispered back. The woman at the table couldn't help themselves but to have a chat with you. You felt like you were a new toy for them as they pampered you so much, complimenting you and already inviting you to a thousand places at the same time, wanting to, wanting you to meet their daughters and be friends with you. Some even recognize your books, wanting to know everything about them. You couldn't resist but to accept an invitation to have a tea with them sometime later, as they really wanted to talk, to wanted to talk more with, with you to get to know you. After. After all the chatting, Law and you left a little early as he noticed how tired of socializing you were. He also wasn't the type to socialize with them for a long time, and he had made his point 
of still being the best surgeon in the hospital. What do you think about them? He asked once you were in the car. They are too loud, he admitted. But I, but I really can't wait for the next one. He smiled hearing you say that. And you better do some crazy shit in the hospital because I'm not letting you lose, he said, kissing his cheek. Oh, that was cute. Is it a baby? Oh, sh <laughs> it's a graveyard. In the, in the next one. Was this fucking chapter 27? Yeah, 27. I'm good. I'm good at counting. Seven. Yeah. Right. All you, man. Okay. My eye held up. I'm dying. You stretched. Happy. You've done a good job and you were proud that you of the work you had put into your document. The clock on your phone showed it was 12.36 a.m., making you even more proud to go to sleep early that night. You had stood up and immediately began cleaning up the space Law had given you, given you in his office, not wanting to cause any problems because of it. It was so he was so determined to get you using that office after the incident. He got two chairs so you could move more, use a more comfortable one while he used the more stylish one. Go to bed, Beppo, you whispered at the dog who was, had been sleeping on your feet for a while. He stretched and wagged his tail before walking out of the office. You followed behind him, turning everything off before closing the office door. Night, boy. Beppo popped onto his bed as you walked inside the room where Law was sleeping. It was adorable, especially when he was sleeping so soundly. He'd been on the hospital floor for around three days in a row, doing surgery after surgery. It was clear when he came home that evening that he had to rest. As much as you insisted for him to go to bed, he had also spent some hours on the office finishing some reports before you had almost dragged him from there to the bed and dragged him to the bed after making him eat. After all, both both of you now looked after each other. After admiring such a handsome face, you took your PJs and proceeded to get a quick shower before hopping to bed. You walked out of the bathroom fresh and ready to go to sleep when you noticed Law was rather different. Maybe it was the position he was in, more covered or that you could almost swear you heard him say something despite never hearing him talk in his sleep before. You slowly got to bed. I still in Law as his expression seemed to reveal one Reveal some more of his distress. You were starting to worry at his state. Law, you called to him, slowly running your hands through his hair. It seemed to calm him down immediately. His expression went back to normal. The more you played with his hair. Are you alright? His eyes opened slowly to see your worried face in front of him. Morning, he said yawning. It's still night, Law. Are you alright? You asked again. He seemed to you seem to have a nightmare. He looked at the clock on the bedside table and then at you, and he felt relief he could still sleep. I'm fine now, he hazy, hazily, he lazily reached for your waist, pulling you closer to him as he buried himself in your chest before falling asleep immediately again. Go to sleep, he ma managed to mumble. You smiled at him before continuing to run your fingers through his hair as you also slowly fell asleep. Are you sure you're okay? You asked for the fifth time that morning. <laughs> After what happened the prior night, you were left feeling rather worried about Law. You kept dismissing it every time you mentioned it. You were good at reading people, and you knew something had been bothering him, or bothering him, or at least worrying him. Leave it already, please, he asked, throwing a ball for Beckett out in the park, who happily ran away after ignoring the serious conversation that he was leaving behind. Not like he could comment on it either way. I'm just worried about you, you said, placing your head on his shoulder. I really care about you. You gave him puppy eyes, but he just rolled his. That doesn't work with me, he commented. It really is nothing. You shouldn't say that. You say that, but your hands are shaking, he said, holding them. He hadn't realized that and was rather impressed and worried that you could tell. If you really don't want to tell me, it's fine, but I just want to know if you... If I can do anything to make you feel okay. I looked around and leaned to you, whispering something into your ear that made your face turn red. Of course you would like that. 
Oh, damn. <laughs> I was like, oh. I didn't know if this is the implication. I think that- oh, damn. Alright. <laughs> he said you wanted to make me feel okay, he smirked. Bebo came back with the ball. This time you threw it after commenting on how Bebo was such a good boy. La was hesitant. He had slowly opened- Opened up with you about what he liked. How he felt and stuff about the gen- About stuff in general in his life. And his current life. You didn't know if he was ready to say it. And yet, you turned to smile at him. Like if you were going to tell him that you were going to be there for whenever he was ready. Today's someone- The birthday of someone very important to me. Get out the blue. He's no longer here. Do you want to visit him? You asked, but he was rather surprised by your answer. But he liked it. You were pitying him, something that he disliked. You weren't pitying him, something that he really disliked. Instead, you were just supporting him, wanting to make sure he was really okay. I can go with you if you want me to, but if you don't want me to get involved, I completely understand. You knew how he, he'd be the type to prefer dealing with this alone, and you didn't seem like you were pushing pushing him to let you in. It would be nice if you come with me, he answered truly. He wanted to have some support. If you were willing to do this for him, he really wanted to take it as no one had ever done it for him, like, done anything like that for him. You nodded, understanding. Beppo! You called the dog who brought the gigantic branch instead of a ball you had thrown him a minute earlier. Let's go home, boy. It took a while to get there, especially because Law was driving rather slowly, almost as if he was trying to avoid it himself. Yet he never stopped, pushing himself to do it. You were nice enough to get some flowers despite Law telling you not to, but there was no stopping you. He still appreciated it, but he wouldn't say it out loud. I can wait here if you want, you told him. He had parked a couple He'd parked for a couple minutes, trying to get his thoughts together. You placed your hand in his, making him look at you. Let's go, he said it. He sighed, opening the door. You took your flowers and exited the vehicle as well. Vehicle at ah. Lot waited for you to hold his hand, which you held gladly as you both walked in between multiple tombstones. Sad surroundings affected you a lot. Seeing people crying over their dead loved ones. But it made Law feel better. You were more than willing to take it for him. As you both looked by, he stopped right in front of a tombstone that read Rosinante Don Quixote. He said absolutely nothing. Nothing at all. But you knew you were there. So you respectively placed the flowers in front of it and waited. He wanted to visit him for so long, it had been years yet, he had only brought himself to do it because you had offered, you had offered an, is that as an option? It was weird how much you seemed to encourage him since you both had met. He felt supported and despite him saying anything or crying, he knew you, he knew that you would stay there with him. He would have loved you. It was the first thing, was the first thing he said. You would have liked him too. I'm sure he was really nice. He chuckled, thinking of his goofy, stupid face. Wondering if he would be proud of him for becoming the person he was right now. Goodbye. He said, crashing to clean the tombstone from some dust. Rest well, he said before standing up again. Let's go, he said. Walking back, but you wouldn't move. Instead, you've walked right in front of it. It was a pleasure, you said, bowing a little to it, earning a smile from Law, who couldn't believe your antics, but he loved them, just as he loved you. Oh, no, my boy Corazon, no! Ah. <laughs> oh my god, you peaked! <laughs> fucking screamed so loud, he, like, peaked the mic. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't even loud. I don't know, it was loud Terrible. enough. I, I just heard like, like <laughs> it sounded like you unplugged your mic and it had like a screech, like a like a technical <laughs> screech. <laughs> I hope That's that picked great. up. That's so funny. <laughs> Rest in peace. Yeah, R.I.P. Bitch. <laughs> oh my god. How dare you? Oh, three more chapters. We got it. <laughs> All right, uh, chapter uh, 
uh, one, two, uh, twenty-eight. <laughs> Don't like him, your boss said in front of him, sitting at the table. I think he's quite charming, Naomi said next to him. He's such a nice looking man as well. But he isn't good enough for our pumpkin. No one is, he said, crossing his arms. He thinks he's Mr. Perfect because he saves lives and all that useless shit. <laughs> Can you please, he said, looking angry at both of them. Talk about it when we're not here. Law looked at you. He didn't bother much about it, as he was really enjoying the meal and had grown to this dynamic already. He must know I dislike him. I don't know why he's still here. I didn't invite him today, either, he said, putting a piece of meat in his mouth. I invited him, dear, Naomi said rather enthusiastic, making your father making your father sigh at her, as for months he has tried to push Law as far away as he could. He even gave you a folder of fake information about Law! <laughs> Incriminating him in drug deals! <laughs> oh my god! Things that you would obviously didn't believe, making this harder and harder for him. Yet, he was happy for you, although he would never say it or admit it. You could notice how happy you were. Whatever, he said again, showing out a big piece of meat. He will last nothing on our family game. He smiled devilishly while Law raised an eyebrow. Oh god, no. You buried yourself in your misery. Please, whatever happens, or he says, do not go. Please. He pleaded to Law, who was rather confused at the situation. Are you interested in a Hutton game, Dr. Trafalgar? Law looked rather shocked at the use of the at his use of words. I go every year with some peers for hunting. Usual thing. I was just wondering if you'd like to come with me. Don't go, please. You repeated. You repeated yourself. But it looked rather interested in your father's proposal. I'll be more than happy to join you. He responded, ignoring you. You knew your boss was was already willing to kill him with his bare hands. You didn't know if he would survive if he went out there with him when he was armed with a gun. <laughs> Point blank, burying him in the, in the woods. <laughs> I'll be fine, he mumbled to you. You weren't happy about his decision, but it was his decision after all. The only thing it could do was pray Law would return alive from this trip. There wasn't much to do. That Saturday, he would kiss Law goodbye, hoping to see him return and would be- <gasps> The Wumpy! <one> <laughs> the Wumpy! <laughs> oh, thank god, we got a One Piece reference in this One Piece fanfiction. Thank god. <laughs> He assured you that he had he had hunted before, and he was more than ready for anything your father could say or do. Morning, Dr. Trafalgar, your boss said, leaving his car, already carrying a good shotgun with him in an outfit that to show that he has done this for a while. Morning, Mr. Douglas, Law said. Your boss pointed, at, pointed his sh shotgun at him for a second before chucking at Law's blank expression as he did so. I brought a gun for you. I didn't know if you could handle it, though, he said, throwing another shotgun at Law, who caught it perfectly. Good catch, son. Thank you, sir. Are we- What oh. is this sudden, like, change? What? That is so funny. Well, I think it's like, is, is he man enough to shoot things, you know? I guess. <laughs> I just think it's funny. Proceed. I'm sorry. No, you're- <laughs> Thank you, sir. I just think he's silly. <laughs> are, are we too early? He got, seeing no one has arrived, and he started to get, get ready already. They are not coming, he said, like nothing, like nothing, adjusting his boots for the terrain they would be going through. It would just be me and you, and nature, of course. Just want to know if, what your whole deal is, Dr. Trafalgar. He loaded his gun and grinned at Law, who was rather relieved it was going, going to be the two of them. Stay close. I don't want, I don't want to shoot you. Your boss says as they ventured into the forest. Law rolled his eyes as his comment, but followed him. He stayed rather quiet for a while after entering the forest, mostly not to alarm any animals, but for some time he spoke again. Look over there. Your father pointed out a bunch of birds on the ground. Law was surprised that even he had even seen them as they as he wouldn't be able to notice them if he hadn't pointed at them. I'll go, he said, taking his shotgun out. Law could see that he was 
excited to show off his skills, maybe to intimidate him, but it worked when he got to the birds from afar. Easy piece. Good shot, sir. <laughs> Law was now a little concerned about his choice to come with him, as he pointed his shotgun at him not long ago without hesitation. Of course it's a good shot, I never miss. He bragged, showing off his shotgun again. I didn't know if you could do the same, son. Your hands are way too delicate for this kind of thing, he said, rather rudely. <laughs> Lost sighed as he knew he would, wouldn't win no matter what he said. You're darn, Dr. Trafalgar. What do you think about those over there? I don't know, he said, looking where he pointed. It was way too far for Law to have a good shot. I don't think I can make it. Of course you can't. Only an expert like me can. Your boss got into position and shot the birds far, but frowned as he got in the wind. <laughs> this gun is bad. He justified himself, shooting up at the sky to see if it would actually work. I don't think shooting up's a good idea, Law said, rather worried. Lost bullets often fall on people. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't need any doctor to come and lecture me about. <laughs> he yelled as he... He felt sudden pain in his shoulder. It hurt so much he dropped to his knees just as Law jumped to see what was wrong. Did you shoot me? He yelled, seeing blood on his shoulders. I don't even fire the gun, Law said, annoyed, as he wouldn't listen to his warning. You have alcohol? He asked, seeing a flask on his belt. Your father nodded, and Law was fast to open it and pour it on the wound. Son of a bitch! He yelled angrily, but Law offered him the flask to drink, which he finished in two sips. The bullet is not in a risky area. Law concluded after ripping the shirt open a little more to examine the situation. We should rush to the hospital right, a right away for a safer extraction. I wouldn't like you to catch something in this environment. Your boss said nothing but fall law, who immediately called the ambulance. Wow, what a, what a trip. You, you would think if, like, if those two were, like, like, in petty situation, if you got a call saying that, like, one of your members is in the hospital, you would think it's law. Because <laughs> your father would have done some shit. <laughs> yeah. Poor, poor Penny. <laughs> it's, it's, tr it's, uh, it's traumatic. What if Penny just thought law shot her dad, like... Yeah, they're like, you fucking shot my father? He's like, it wasn't like that. <laughs> he did it to himself. <laughs> the cry of the hospital was quiet for him. While well, Law talked to everyone about the best procedure to help him out, he was going to complain about his car being left behind. But Law had left his too, just to make sure that it was he was doing okay on the ambulance. Your father wondered why he'd been so harsh to him. If it was if it was clear he was a good guy, he even called you to notify you what had happened, but reassured you he was going to be fine. He had to let you go eventually, and now he knew you were in good hands. For God's sakes, what were you thinking, Harold? Naomi scolded him in the hospital room. You made us worried, you know? Your stubbornness is going to get you killed one day. If it wasn't for Law, you would have died or something worse. Law was going to comment about the non-fatal wound, but the sudden not <laughs> Thank you, you muttered to him. He placed an arm around your shoulder and held you close. It's the least I can do for the guy, he said, smirking at you, making you roll your eyes. I have a lot to learn from him, if I'm being honest. He's a good hunter. Yeah, comes in the family. You, you said, pointing at him with finger guns, shooting at him before you could reach for a kiss. Not so fast, cowboy. You, you wait. Let's go home. Of course. Give me a second. I need to ask your boss about some shooting classes. <laughs> you smiled hearing this, as you hoped they had started to hate each other less. <laughs> I'll be out. You said, leaving the room. A lot of person, Naomi and your father, who was still commenting about how reckless he had been, yet they stopped when he got close. Thank you again for everything, Law, Naomi said, hugging him. Thing that she'll never done before. It's nothing to thank me for, he said, looking at your boss, who was rather embarrassed. I should be thanking your husband for letting me see... See with... Wait... I should be thanking your husband for letting me see with my own eyes his skills. Okay, that's it. I'm just gonna read. <laughs> when, when you have a gift, you have a gift, he bragged again, earning another angry look at Naomi. Sorry. <laughs> I wanted to ask you for something, Law said, going straight to the point, with 
Both Naomi and your father listened attentively to his words. Silence filled the room after Law made the question. Naomi and him exchanged a look for a moment as they discussed what to do. I understand if you're not comfortable with this. I thought she would appreciate it if... I like it, Naomi said. We both agree. It's a yes on our behalf. Alright. You, you get to do the, the, the final official chapter before we get into like the special shit, man. <laughs> and then we can't do anything because of copyright. How disappointing. Damn it. You sneak- <laughs> you sneak out of the bed. Delete- wait, hold up. Oh, there we go. <laughs> you sneaked out of the bed. Slowly and quietly, making sure not to wake up Law. He seemed to be deep in his sleep, so you smiled proudly. You signaled for Beppo to follow you, and both of you left to the kitchen, trying to be as quiet as possible. You'd planned this for some time. Something for Law's birthday. It had turned out to be almost impossible as he hated every- Oh. You see? Oh, sorry. How dare you? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm kidding. So sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm it had turned out to be almost possible as he hated everything surrounded birthdays. He didn't like parties because they were too loud. He didn't like balloons and confetti because it, it was messy and he didn't like bread or cake. Your dad is such a drama queen, you told Beppo as he took a little ice cream confection you'd gotten him and he surely would have bit of the cake at her, refused to eat it. You were careful to light the little candle and place it on the top of the ice cream cake, whilst running knowing the ice cream would melt soon. So, return to the bedroom as quietly as you could, closing the door after letting Bebo in again. After all, if, it, if there was going to be a little surprise, you wanted Bebo to be there. Oh my god, they keep yawning. <laughs> Oh my Good god, are, are you getting bored of the law extruder right now? I'm, yeah, I'm not getting enough oxygen to my brain. Oh. I'm sorry. <laughs> Me either, man. Good morning. <laughs> Lost it and was scaring the shit of you. You almost dropped the ice cream to the floor and managed to hold it tight, avoiding such a disaster. What are you? Happy birthday? He said, offering a smile of the ice cream with a defeated smile. He chuckled, blowing the single candle. It's impossible to use surprise you law i hate you you love me he said putting the ice cream cake away and pulling you to bed kissing you but you looked away offended when he had woken up before you could wake him maybe next year no you're going to be waiting for it next year he said pouting i know you maybe you'll find a way he said looking at the ice cream he couldn't help but to smile at the little detail thank you he's kissing your teeth Whatever. What do you want to do today? You asked. He raised an eyebrow and smirked, making you roll your eyes at the obvious suggestion. I mean, you could also do that, but what do you want to do today? <laughs> I need to go to the hospital to pick something up. It would be nice if you were to come with me, he said. He smiled excitedly. I'd love to go. Maybe I could see the kids again. He said, making him sighs. You knew those kids would rip him to pieces if they saw him again. Every time you visited him in the hospital and you saw the kids to read them something. And every time he came to pick you up, the kids would throw things at him because he looked scary and always took you away. But you found that adorable. After a very good morning, he took you up for lunch. Something that annoyed you because you wanted to pamper him all day, and but you wanted to be taken to a restaurant instead. I want to have lunch, he said to you as, he enter as you entered the restaurant. Familiar as you'd been there with him on your first date. Here. I could have brought you here, Law. How am I supposed to give you a super good day if you won't let me? He said, sitting down, but he gave a rather happy look. I, have, I am having a good day, he said, looking at the menu. I'm with you. Oh, stop it with the corny things, you said, crossing your arms but madly blushing at his words, making you chuckle. I still have a gift for you. You ain't taking that from me. You winked, grabbing something from your purse. All grub, all balled up into a, a ball of paper, but you obviously weren't that handy. For me, he said, pretending to be surprised. <laughs> he knew about a gift because you'd never carried a purse or something like that, but he took it kindly. He took it kindly, unwrapping the paper on the table. You shouldn't have, he started saying, well, finishing unwrapping it, but stopped when he saw it. Happy birthday, he said. <laughs> 
smiling at his <laughs> astonished face. It took him a minute to realize what he'd received. A little trophy that said, that read, To Trafalgar Law, for being, an ama being the greatest doctor of all time. It was small, but the trophy had carved, had carved the shape, had been carved into the shape of his chest tattoo. On it was a plus. He smiled. It was something you only would think about. I know you have a lot of trophies and diplomas, but I wanted to... If I could remember how to read. But I wanted you to have one given... I wanted to give you one by myself. He didn't say anything. He didn't know what to say. No one had ever done something like that for him. He said surely caught him by surprise and he couldn't stop admiring it. You... The words didn't make it to his mouth, and but he did make it to you. It almost pushed the table away to reach you, embracing you in a loving kiss, something that surprised you yourself. Such a reaction from him was so special. Thank you. I'll take that as a win, he whispered, triumphant to him, who it didn't complain, but returned slowly to his place. You admired him. He was always so controlled, professional, yet you somehow seemed to find a more relaxed and open side to him. Things like that seemed to be overwhelming emotionally, and he just reacted compulsively to it. A thing he never did. Stop looking at me like that, please, he asked after a minute. He just chuckled and looked at the menu sometimes, peeking at him. Happy that you made him happy. The ride to the hospital was rather quiet, yet Law couldn't stop showing a little glimpse of joy you had never seen before. Just looking at him, you could notice something going on, something that somehow made him extremely happy, and you couldn't tell why. It was because of your gift, or just something different. What are we going to do here? You asked him, as you traveled through the familiar complex. But he seemed to listen or just ignore- He seemed not to listen, or just ignore your question. Law? Just need to pick up something from my office, he said in a rather low voice. Can I go with the kids in the meantime? Yes, but his expression changed into a more worried one, confusing you. Come with me, then we could go. He said more seriously. He, he, is this a proposal? What? Do you think, what? That's do you crazy. Think it could be? That's crazy, man. He, no. <laughs> Don't, not gonna lie. If someone proposed to me on my birthday, I would not be about it. Yeah, but he's proposing to you on his birthday. If someone proposed to me on their birthday, I'd be rather upset. But- <laughs> Why would you be upset? Well, good thing- <laughs> Hey, you're taking- Look, that means our anniversary would have to be on their birthday. That has to be a separate affair. Well, that's the that's proposal- That's so much less fun. Well, that, that's why he's proposing to you. Like, what, the marriage- If he really- No, 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 let's continue, because I really hope not. Okay. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Did you already finish this? Can I be honest? No, not until I finish. <laughs> okay. After all, it was his birthday and he wanted him to have a really good day. We would just take a detour. I don't want to run into the guys today. I'm sure they're dying to celebrate with you, you said as he took your hand. You like this. He wasn't much of a shower, but even with holding hands, it made the day even more special for the both of you somehow. We met here, he commented out of the blue. Catching you by surprise as you did remember the hallway, that hallway more than anything else in the hospital. If you could remember it was room 207, he said. Stopping right in front of me. I like thinking about it. <laughs> I was so scared, he said, touching the door number. When I woke up, I was so scared. You were such an asshole, <laughs> you said, giving him a cheeky smile. We were also the one who helped me recover, and for that I will forever be thankful. Almost as an instinct, you decided to open the door, finding no one inside but a lot of candles somehow. You were also an asshole at first, he said, as he walked in, confused, and following behind. Such a stubborn patient, who was still concentrated on her work, to want to rest, but I know why you did it. You love doing that. You turned at him confused, at the appearance of the room. I love that. Law, I love how you are in every single way. I love you in every single way. That you showed me how 
to be better person somehow. I've met thousands of people, treated a million patients, and I fell in love with you. He took your hand. I love you so much, but I want you to know that I want to spend the rest of my life with you. I can't see myself not doing so. His gaze, although serious, showed so much emotion. <laughs> you can see everything about him just by staring into his eyes. Would you share this life with me? Why do you have to be so cute? You said kissing him. I can't say no to that face. I hope it would help for something. He said smirking, kissing you and holding you tight. I'd even ask your parents for permission. Well, I hope they say yes. Otherwise, we'll have to flee the country. You joked. It was clear to you. They've agreed to do it. Are you liking your birthday so far? It's my favorite one. Yeah, it was your proposal. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. I, I was suspicious, and then I was like, suspicious. That's suspicious. That's weird. That's weird. <laughs> Alright, how long is this special? Oh, Jesus, this oh, is well, long. Maybe we should Is it have, really? Well, maybe we'll give the audience, like, whoever watches this video, they should go and wa and read this special. That way they can support the author. <laughs> we can't give them everything, that's true, that's you know? True. You know? That is true, that is true. But we're gonna, like, after we end this recording, we're, <laughs> we're gonna be like, alright, so you wanna load up that chapter real quick? <laughs> go ahead and read through this. <laughs> <laughs> and... To, to be completely honest with you, I read this book a year ago. <laughs> oh, okay. And then gotcha. I was like, this is really good. And then we rekindled and I was like, hey, we sh th this is a pretty good one since you get into One Piece. And then th the rest is history. I, I was <laughs> this trying is to... a that I wouldn't re I wouldn't watch One Piece. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> yeah. And now so, here I am, so very, is... very, very slowly watching it. I have not watched anything since Alabasta. Bitch, you just got the end of Alabaster. Just do the filler arc and you'll get this guy. I'm idea. trying. You're not let doing it hard. <laughs> let me admire my figures. Oh, right. Of characters who I barely see. Yeah, I can't believe you're collecting Shanks figures right now and you don't really hey, see Hey, I them. only have two Shanks figures. I only have two Shanks figures and I just got my smoker. And he's very gorgeous to me. <laughs> he is very gorgeous to me. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, yeah, this book, this book has been long, but it's been good. But we finished! We did you it! You know what that means. <laughs> New book! <laughs> you know what that means. New book? The wheel. Oh, the wheel. The yeah, wheel. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Alright, with the law book now off of here. What's in store for us now? Please be Jolene's choice again. <laughs> <laughs> this is not gonna be my choice. Manifest, it's manifest, not gonna manifest. be my choice. Not a... Oh! Okay, we're back to that one! Back to reality! Oh, there goes gravity. Alright. I, I guess we're continuing that one. I guess so. Yeah, that should be interesting. And what what will, what will we be on? Well, I feel like that one was a long one, wasn't it? Was it? Like I the cannot, chapters? I cannot remember off the top of my head. I'm gonna have to look it over. I just I just remember they're both thieves and it's in Dress Rosa and Dopamingo's an yeah. asshole, which is like he already is, but like I'm glad they put him I am glad they carried it through. Mm hmm No no who Dolphamingo reminds me of? Valentino. And it's not a good thing. <laughs> of course not. Yeah. Yeah. They suck. Yeah, they will suck. They could suck my dick. I'm really- like, you have not gotten a single of Phoenix's choice. It was no. terrible. We've had mine three times and I, like, feel guilty. <laughs> yeah, not even with, like, my other guests and whatnot, it barely lands on me. I landed like, on Mingo, on? like, twice. Dang. And that's so why who I has the most- who has the most their choice? I feel like- I think you and Mingo are tied. We're three for three? Yeah, basically. Oh, wait, Dang, you, you I gotta fight Minho. Times? Yeah, this yeah, three times. When was the third time? Okay, so my first time was the with the Bowiji. And the second time right. was Oh yeah, so you are really... Okay, I gotta yeah, like, like, I gotta fight Minho now. Yeah, you're you only I can win. too, because he, he picked a fucking he picked a SpongeBob X reader and then he picked another Gooby Doo one. I'm trying to remember what it was. <laughs> 
Was it Scooby Doo? Yes, it was Scooby Doo. Yeah, so he picked SpongeBob and Scooby Doo. I'm like, why did you do this? And he's like, I thought it was gonna be funny. <laughs> and then the joke's on him. Now we have to read it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, y you're you're the lead for that one. Dang. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, to your document. Yes. But uh, what document? <laughs> I thought we were- did you not want to work on the thing? We could talk- we could just chit-chat if you'd like. Well, so we could always work on it tomorrow. <laughs> I, <gotta do> <laughs> I mean, huh? we can after this, hold on. But anyway... <laughs> uh, I got- thank you guys for watching this law thing. It took only seven episodes, but we finished it. Or maybe six? I can't, I can't remember. I kind of blacked out after in that last one of us reading <laughs> the- the smut. But anyway... <laughs> <laughs> It has been a very long time. Yeah, it's neither here or there, but you should definitely go support the author and whatnot. The, the original book is linked down below. They have a bunch of other ones, included a, like a Sanji one, which is unfinished, but I feel like from where that chapter ended, it's finished in my book, so... But definitely go read that special, plus uh, like, like author's note and whatnot, because uh, that one's pretty good as well. Alright, well, thank you, Julian, for joining. I appreciate it. It's always a blast. No problem, man. But anyway, my name is Phoenix. That was Jolene, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye!